Hello, Truth Seeker. Um, you asked me, do I think the Gospel of Mary is Gnostic or that it reflected the Gnostic beliefs at the time? <sighs> like many Gnostic Gospels, um, unless they are being critiqued by the early church fathers, um, and, well, not even the early church fathers, what get called the early church fathers? Because many of the early church fathers are not. I mean, make a good case that Julius Sextus Africanus was actually Gnostic. Um, Tertullian was a Montanist, or turned into a Montanist. One that happened, I mean, I know a Gnostic, or, well, Valentinian, that uh, believes that he was always a Montanist. Um, you had Origen, which people claim he was in heresy for most of his life or whatever, but then died Orthodox. Um, I hope you understand Orthodox is in the sense that we speak about it. Many Gnostics that were on YouTube about five years ago that didn't know each other or came together in different groups wound up coming into the Eastern Orthodox Church, either the Oriental Orthodox Communion, such as Syriac and Coptic, or Eastern Orthodox because of the shock that they saw. And unfortunately, this might, I'm not saying it's a bad thing that they came in, but there's some, this is why we wind up being the breeding ground and why a lot of Gnostic stuff came from uh, Egypt and then Syria. Uh, and what is actually Gnostic? Um, again, it was a slander meaning know-it-all, and Gnostics certainly didn't call themselves Gnostic, um, just as the Protestants called the Roman Catholics pagan, yeah? The pagans and the idolaters, and you think, where are these polytheists that are, you know, and they're, but they're not, these are slanders, right? Uh, Marcion gets called a Gnostic, Arius gets called a Gnostic, but what we understand as Gnosticism today, basically the branches of Valentinianism, Basilidianism, um, the Cathars, which I guess you would broadly group, the Paulicians, the Bogomils, the Albigensians, um, the Gospel of Mary, which we only have bits of, yes. Um, <laughs> because of the extreme doom and gloom, the um, the separation of women are lower than men or might not have souls, uh, and the implications of, you know, this world is bad, the physical world, there's nothing beauty, you can't look around or see any evidence for God in this world, you just see the, the evidence of the demi-urge, basically the God that Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens believe exists, you know, this is filthy, you know, these people who see an endless cycle of sex and death and birth, and the Gnostics try to cut that off by celibacy. Um, this is why monasteries were outlawed basically in the church until St. Anthony. A bunch of, group, a bunch of men uh, cloistering themselves together in the desert excluding women and outsiders, the church said, no, 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 you're not doing that crap. Um, and it, when I first came into the church, um, or it, not even that, early Christianity, right? I read Paul and went, that's Gnostic. And I looked at pastorals and I said, that's when he got older or somebody else wrote those. And I thought Paul might have written, written John and I actually thought the three letters of John were not only not written by John, but were not written by the same person who wrote the Gospel of John. And I discounted Luke and Matthew, and I saw Mark as just a factual thing, right? Um, and I saw the Apocalypse of John as not being from John the Apostle, which I still don't think is, because we know John died in Ephesus, I believe he was married to, I don't, it's not I believe he was married to, he was married to um, Mary Magdalene, yeah? 
um, <clears throat> just as uh, Philip had two daughters who became deaconesses. And, uh, you know, I put a very early date on the apocalypse. Um, probably, the, I put say that would be the earliest thing. And there was, you know, there's tinkering, you know, like the movement of um, the woman at the well, or the, the stoning of the woman from John to Luke. Um, that's why I always say the church wrote, edited, and compiled the Bible. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, it's, it's Gnostic. Uh, but the problem is, is that you have so many branches of Gnosticism that it's out of control. That's why the Gnostics kind of were the way they were. Is they were they had charismatic leaders. If you just look today at the American landscape, right, you have um, these people like Joseph Prince, John Hagee. That's why you had Judaizers that wound up getting called Gnostics, even though the way we kind of terminology the terminology we use now is Gnostics at one end of the extreme who had kind of Marcionite beliefs, but secret because they were the elite. And if you ever talk to them, even a modern day Gnostic, they are elitists. They look down at the peons, the rest of the hoi polloi is, you know, even though they like to use this thing from Thomas, that there's a spark of light of God in all of us. And any believer says, yes, of course, that's even within non-believers. But the Gnostics say, no, that's not in the non-believer. And that's not even in a lot of believers that there's this, you know. It's why Eastern Orthodox tend to call Calvin the, the Valentinian of the West. So you kind of had this, they they didn't agree with each other. Even, I believe, Basilidianism was a break-off of um, Valentinus. And Valentinus claimed, and other people actually claim this too, that he was a disciple of a disciple of Paul. And that's very believable. It's very easy to read Paul. I mean, if you look at Marcion... Um, or the responses to Marcion, it's very easy to see how Marcion, growing up in Pontus, where you would have the letter to the Galatians, and basically just that. I mean, they, these didn't get collect, start getting collected until the end of the first century, beginning of the second. Um, then going to Rome and reading the Old Testament and being super, super pissed, right? What is this garbage, this evil God, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's Gnostic. But what category? I mean, after a bit, I mean, Serinthus supposedly is a Judaizer, but also a Gnostic. And then we get these wild, wild theories. And you had people who were, had these strange versions of Matthew. And the people will even say the Ebionites were Gnostic. Uh, that's, the, that's the other end of the extreme. Those were the Judaizers. And you had people like the Ebionites the Alkazites, um, what's the other name? Um, the Ebionites, the Alkazites, the Nasserines, which all may have been the same movement, and some say they were. Um, and some believe that morphed into Islam. Um, Islam certainly took a lot from it, took a lot from the Protoevangelium of James. Uh, and <clears throat> Protestants will accuse the Protoevangelium of James being Gnostic. Let me ask you this. May I ask you this? Do you believe Origen and St. Clement of Alexandria were Gnostic? Because many people read the Stromata or read Origen and go, you know, because Origen had um, everybody going to heaven at one point, you know, or at least a possibility for um, the entirety of salvation. I'm not going to use the Greek terms here, although I think you have Gnosis in your name, which is good knowledge. Um, because people tend to look at Gnosticism with rose-colored glasses. Um, they tend to think Gnosis means some type of special knowledge. It, you can put that meaning there, but also every Gnostic that I know, ex actual Gnostic, some people who I would actually put the badge of Gnostic on, um, have done a hell of a lot of research. Uh, and, you know, because if you want the truth, you seek the truth. And then there are those people who bloviate about being a Gnostic. Um, you can tell by you asking about Mary that you probably in the former category. Um, that's why I would ask you your opinion of those things, because I, <laughs> like the former person that I was dealing with, um, who would 
never follow a debate who would just preach at me about uh, calling me a terrorist and, and from this high pillar looking down on me and then trying to keep calling me names and then just preaching at me and me just going, how, how, he couldn't answer a single question. And he still, it's like a barking dog and it's maddening and I shouldn't have made three videos. But yeah, but then again, do we, what we have of the Gospel of Mary is in bits. And I can't rightly say, well, look at the stuff that is taken out of context continually in the New Testament, continually taken out of context and go, oh yeah, these three things, because, I mean, if you if we only had bits and pieces of Tertullian, we'd go, wow, this guy was a super, super Marcionite, or Hippolytus. If we only had pieces of him, we'd go, this is the most Gnostic man who ever lived. Which, again, the Western Protestants, or Western Christianity altogether, I mean, if you read Hippolytus, they might think it's Gnostic. Peace to you.